So, the, our characters are Bronwyn, who, who is a 20-year-old woman, the high-strung older sister and legal guardian of Dia. Dia, a 17-year-old woman, Bron or 17-year-old girl, Bronwyn's younger sister, who wants nothing more than freedom and agency. And Lindsay, a 20-year-old woman who is in a self-destructive friendship with Bronwyn. We are in Bronwyn and Dia's mm -hmm. home in the present day. Scene 1. Bronwyn and Lindsay are sitting on a couch in Bronwyn's living room doing homework. A door is bifurcating the stage, splitting it into the inside and outside of the house. What'd you get for number three? Huh? Number three. Oh, I haven't gotten there yet. Damn, you're distracted tonight. Everything okay? Oh, yeah, everything's fine. It's just... Dia enters the house and speeds past Bronwyn and Lindsay. Dia! Where have you been? It's past ten! Wouldn't you like to know? Yes, in fact, I would like to know. You need to tell me when you're going to be out so late. Ugh. I was just at Chelsea's house. You've met her. She drove me home. I didn't want to walk home in the dark or anything. Can you just lay off me for once? Oh, that's me. Hey, dear. You want to watch something with us? We were just about to take a break. Take a break? We barely got started. You need a break. Come on. Don't you want to be in Parks and Rec with us for the 50th time? Sure, why not? Not like I have anything better to do. Let me grab something to eat first. Dia drops her backpack on the couch next to Bronwyn and goes into the kitchen. Lindsay starts browsing Netflix. Dia's phone buzzes inside her backpack, and when Bronya thinks Bronwyn thinks no one is watching, she reaches into the backpack to sneak a peek at Dia's phone. We could watch rewatch Parks and Rec, or we could check out a new reality dating show with the feral lemurs. I heard it's supposed to be awful. Looks over at Bron when it sees her hunched over Dia's phone. Hey, Bron, what are you doing? Dia, can you come out here? Give me a sec. No, I need you here now. Can you explain this to me? Dia enters carrying a bag of chips. Explain what? Dia drops the bag and rushes over to Bronwyn. What the fuck are you doing with my phone? What's all this about moving out? I saw you got a text from Chelsea saying, when you move out. It's just an idea we've been talking about, okay? You don't need to freak out about it. Oh, I don't? Then why have you been talking about apartment hunting with your friends for the past three months? You guessed my password? Give me back my phone. No, not until you tell me what's going on. I'm almost 18. I don't have to justify my choices to you. <clears throat> How do you expect to afford an apartment? You don't have a job. I'll get one. And what if you can't? I'll figure it out. I'll couch surf. I don't know. Anything to get me out of this shithole. No. You're staying right here until I know you can take care of yourself out there. I don't care if you're turning 18 next month. You are still a child. I'm not a fucking kid anymore. And you're not my mom. Dia snatches her phone from Bronwyn, grabs her backpack, and bolts towards the door. <coughs> you know what? I'm not waiting. I can't live in this house where I don't have my fucking privacy. Dia goes out the door and sits on the doorstep, calling someone on her phone. Hey, Chelsea, there's no way you can come pick me back up, is there? I just can't take this anymore. I just can't understand her sometimes. You really shouldn't have done that. You're taking her side? You never take Dia's side. This isn't picking sides. You looked at her phone. That's a total violation. How would you like it if she looked through your private texts? I wouldn't care, because I don't keep secrets from my sister. You might not keep secrets, but I know the kinds of pictures you keep on there. Seriously, you need to lay off of her. She might be your legal charge, but she's only, what, three years younger than you? She's just... She's so ungrateful for everything I've done for her. And I'm not even talking about just since Gran died. I've cooked for her, helped her with school, done everything I could to keep her safe for as long as I can remember. I protected her from Mon's drugged rampages from the second she was born. She wasn't even old enough to know what I was protecting her from. I, I know, I get that. But you have to let her have a little more freedom. You were only a little older than her when you got custody of her. 
Can you go out and talk her down for me? She might actually listen to you. No, Bron. You don't have to do this one yourself. Come on, you're so good at talking people out of their anger. When she's calmed down, I can apologize for looking through her phone, and she can apologize for trying to move out so suddenly. You never listen, do you? Lindsay stands up and walks towards the door. Where are you going? Out for a smoke. You know I hate that you do that. Yeah, but unlike Dia, apparently, you can't control the choices I make. Lindsay exits and Bronwyn flops on the couch, defeated. Lights up on the side of the stage where Dee is still sitting, waiting to be picked up. Lindsay crouches down across from her and lights a cigarette. Hey. Hey. You want one? Holds that cigarette box to Dia. Nah, addiction runs in the family. I don't want to risk anything. <laughs> Smart. See? You're so much smarter than your sister thinks you are. So did she send you here to talk some sense into me or something? <sighs> no, I needed a break. I tried so hard to get through to her, to get her to calm down and just relax for once. But she never listens to me, especially when it has to do with you. Why do you put up with her? You're not her therapist. It's not your job to talk her down from her bullshit. I don't know. She's always there for me, so it's only fair that I- Is she, though? You're always over here, but I've never seen her help you through anything <laughs> before. She's just using you. Maybe I'm just hoping like an idiot that if I calm her down enough, she can be there for me, too. Ugh. You sound like those girls who keep dating abusive boys. They think they can just change. Is that it? Do you put up with Bronwyn's bullshit because you want to date her? And Lindsay turns away and takes a drag from her cigarette. Oh, damn. I was right. Dude, you could do so much better than her. You know, if you were to move out, I'd finally be able to ask her if we could move in together. I fucking hate the girls in my apartment. And I'd be lying out my ass if I wasn't hoping for some for sort of and-they-were-roommate scenario to happen. Well, that... Oh. Sorry. Um. There we go. Where am I? Right here. Oh. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. You can have my room starting tonight. No, no, listen. I, I do think you should move out. I, I really do, but maybe not tonight. Why the fuck not? Brownwin isn't going to let me have any agency if I stay here. Might as well leave as soon as possible. Because you're really going to hurt her. And why should I care? She hurts me all the time. I'm a month away from being a legal adult, and she won't let me do anything. I can't stay out with friends. I can't learn to drive. I can't even have basic privacy, apparently. She's always acting like a helicopter parent, but she's not my mom. And she'll never be my mom. Uh, Bucklet is, uh, tending to the dog because she's barking. Dia tucks her knees up to her chest and starts fiddling with something on the ground. Sisters are supposed to fight about shit like stealing each other's clothes or calling each other dumb names. I never got a real big sister. Just a fake mom who thinks I can't make choices for myself. That's... Yeah. You deserve to have the kind of relationship with mom where she sneaks you into all the cool college parties and you end up having your first hangover and a conversation about the meaning of life with some stone dude neither of you have ever met. <laughs> That's pretty specific. Yeah, it's what I did with my sister when I was your age. Listen, I know you don't have a traditional relationship with Bronwyn. I know she treats you like a little kid when she really shouldn't, but you mean the world to her. You might not remember your real parents, but she sure as hell does. And that shit was traumatizing. Her earliest memories are protecting you from them. I'm not saying you should let her shelter you forever for her sake, but that'd be super self-destructive. But you might want to... Give her a little time to warm up to the idea of you moving out. 
our last piece of family. Once you're gone, she's got no one left. She'll always have you, apparently. Yeah, well, that's different. The offer to have my room tonight is still open. Tempting, but no. I gotta do what's best for her. That, that's what I'm here for. Talk about self-destructive. How about this? I'll go back inside and tell Brown when I'm gonna stick around a little longer, but only if you go in first and tell her how you really feel. What? No! It, it's not the right time. I... When is it gonna be the right time? She's always sad and anxious and fighting with me. Either you go in there and you tell her why you spend so much time giving her three free therapy, or I hop in Chelsea's car. Looks like you've got about five minutes. Fine. Lindsay stands up and enters the house. Bronwyn, still flopped on the couch, perks up and she sees Lindsay enter. Lindsay! I'm so sorry about earlier. I know I shouldn't try to tell you what to do with your body. That was way out of line. Thanks, Bron. Listen, I need to tell you something. Did you talk to Dia? Is she still here? Uh, yeah, but first oh thank god thank you so much for talking her down i knew you could do it but i didn't bronwyn bolts the door and opens it to find dia still on the stoop dia i'm so glad you're still here i'm i'm really sorry i looked at your phone like that that was a real violation and i promise never to do it again dia is silent but uncurls to look at bronwyn also i i'm sorry i blew up about you moving out i just Get so scared about what could happen to you out there that I... I get it. I'm the baby sister you need to protect. But you're not. Not anymore. Every time I look at you, I see the tiny child I shielded when Mom started throwing plates. But we're not there anymore, and you're not her anymore. So, I still want to move out when I turn 18. Nobody can change my mind on that. But if you want, I wouldn't mind if you gave me a little help. We could apartment hunt together. Really? That's great! I'll look up a list of the safest neighborhoods in the city and... But! Only if I get to make the decisions. I'm sick of you being my mom all the time. I just want you to be my sister for once. Fine. That's... fine. I do need to learn to calm down a little. Speaking about calming down, why don't we all go inside and watch something? What was that lemur dating show you were talking about, Lindsay? Oh, um... Actually, I think I'm gonna head home for the night. Really? You never leave this early. We barely got started on our homework. No, yeah, I... I just gotta go home and... reevaluate some stuff. Good luck. Oh, well, we'll miss you. See you tomorrow, then? Uh, yeah, maybe. Lindsay waves weakly and exits. Bronwyn and Dia sit down on the couch to watch Netflix. End scene. That's really good. I really like that. <laughs> that was good. It was very good. So yeah, that's my playwriting assignment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was that was dope. 